Hello everyone, and welcome to my classic season of Discovery Rogue Leveling Guide. In this guide, I'll talk about different tips and tricks, the talent trees I like to level with, how I will gear up as I'm also gaining a ton of experience, and last but not least, the best race or well, what I would choose for each individual spec. So what talent build do I usually go with? Well, if this was a original classic, I would go with combat. But the thing is that in Season of Discovery, all of them will work so well up to 25. Therefore, I will also make a build for each specialization. If I was going to play as a combat rogue, then I would spend 2 points into improve Sinister Strike and then max out my gouge. In the next row, you have two decent options. I never go with improved backstab, but instead deflection and precision. I often go with deflection as it allows me to also unlock a new ability, Repost. One of our best damage dealing abilities and it also disarms the target for 6 seconds. Then to our left we can reduce the cooldown of our evasion and sprint. Super useful. Also so we can travel around a lot quicker because the cooldown of our sprint has been reduced with 90 seconds. I never spend any points into improved sprint as this is mainly for PvP. So instead I spend points into precision as it will help me level up quicker. Another fun build is to play a sub rogue. In the first row, you can either choose to reduce the chance of being detected by enemies or increase the damage of many of your abilities that you use while in stealth, for example backstab and ambush. In the next row, I don't really like to spend any points. Camouflage is mainly for PvP, well, in my opinion, and elusiveness, I feel like this is a waste. Vanish is unlocked at level 22 and blind at level 34, so this is going to be introduced in phase 2 at least what we know of so far. So Master of Deception is way better in my opinion, so you can sneak up on the enemies and ambush or backstab them. At level 18 we also unlock ambush, so you could improve the chance of critting, but the thing is that you can also choose to get Ghostly Strike at level 20. It's of course all a preference. If you like to open up with ambush, then you should just back into improving the chance of also critting immediately, or else unlock Ghostly Strike if you want a new ability. No matter what you choose, then it will work out fine. I just prefer to go with Ghostly Strike in the beginning and then spending 3 points into Improved Ambush. Your last option is to level as Assassination. And in the first row, I feel like Improved Eviscerate is the worst thing. Instead, you should either max out Malice to get 5% increased crit or spend points into the one in the middle. This is what I often do and then afterward spending 3 points into Malice to get to the next row. In the second row, you should try to max out your Slice and Dice as fast as possible. This will increase the duration, and Slice and Dice has to be up all the time when you're fighting enemies. I never spend any points into Murderer, as I feel like 2% damage is nothing. Ruthlessness can be amazing, but what I usually do is to max out my Malice, so I also unlock the opportunity to spend points into everything in the third row. Because when you max out Malice, you can also spend points into Lethality, and this will be an important talent. But first you need to make sure you learn Relentless Strikes. And once you have unlocked this, then you can start maxing out your Lethality. So like I mentioned, all the specializations will work, and remember, we only need to get to level 25, so it's not that big of a deal. Next up is some useful tips and tricks while you're leveling, but also at max level. As a rogue, it's quite easy to do a 1 vs 1. But mastering a rogue, where you take care of many things at the same time, for example seizing another target or interrupting, is something that will be important if you also wish to master this class. When you're fighting a target, and if nearby targets is about to get close to you, then you should use your distract. This you can use on targets not in combat, so for example on a nearby patrol. This move should give you enough time to finish off your current target, and then you can get back into stealth and make sure you get away without dying. At low level you unlock Gouge. It will generate one combo point and CC the target for 4 seconds. Enough time for you to manage to get some distance and use your ranged weapon. This trick can be so useful when you need to deal with a difficult target. But also in PvP, as you can then gouge, make some distance, or maybe even use one of the new rooms that allow you to use a pistol to slow the enemy's movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds. And this also awards a combo point. So when you combine it together with gouge and this, then you will generate a lot of combo points, 
And then you can use it together with a new finishing move you can also learn from a rune. This will do a ranged attack and even stun the enemy. As I mentioned earlier, a good rogue knows how to deal with multiple targets at the same time, not just in PvP, also in PvE. And just like earlier, then I will use a mouse over macro to take care of these kind of things. All the different macros I'm talking about in this video, I'll of course also leave in the description so you can easily copy paste it into your game. So as you can see right here, I have a main target, but I still manage to deal with many other things on the other targets because of these mouse over macros. There's nothing more annoying than accidentally spamming your stealth ability and then breaking your stealth. But this you can easily fix by making something like this. Flash cast exclamation mark stealth. Allowing you to now spam this ability without breaking it if you're in stealth. And to make it even more insane, you can also make a second line with for example cheap shot or sap. And now you will instantly stealth and use this ability. As you can see right here, a stealth and a cheap shot the mage. Instead of getting to level 25 and then start doing dungeons, then what I will do on my way to max level is to do them. This way I gain levels because of experience in the dungeons and from the different quests you can do, and on top of this also amazing loot. This will also allow me to level up a bit quicker. So when I get to 25 then I don't have to do as many dungeons before I'm ready to also start raiding. In that mind, I'll try to obtain the Defiers armor, Rural Barb, and Cape of the Brotherhood. And as a Horde player, I would most likely head into Wailing Caverns first, but here there's also many important items to obtain. For example, the different Fang items, and even another cloak as well. If you're still lacking a ranged weapon, or maybe even a slow one-hand weapon, then you can also obtain these in Wailing Caverns. Else, you should move on to Shadowfang Keep, and try to obtain this ring from Baron. Or maybe even this dagger from the final boss. Just remember that these are unique, so you can only equip one of them. However, it's a quick weapon, so it could function really well as an offhand for, for example, a combat rogue. If you're still lacking a pair of leather gloves, then you could also find a leather worker, or maybe even level up this profession yourself, and craft these. A lot of agility, stamina, and spirit. So what race should you pick? As a night elf, you will benefit from Shadow Melt, as it increases your stealth level by one, so it will be more difficult for people to also detect you. And you even get quickness as well, that increases your dodge chance by 1%. Stone Foam makes you immune to bleed, poison and disease effects for 8 seconds, and also increasing your armor by 10%. This is useful in PvE if you plan to tank, but especially also in PvP. As a human, your spirit is passively increased by 5%, but you also get sword and mace specialization, so whenever you equip a one-hand sword or a one-hand mace, then your skill in these weapons will be increased, allowing you to have a higher chance of hitting the enemy. And then we also gain perception, a cooldown you can use to increase your stealth detection for 20 seconds, useful when you're fighting rogues or druids in PvP. As a gnome, you get escape archist, which is a 0.5 seconds cast, it will remove all immobilizing effects and things that also reduces your movement speed. This is mainly useful in PvP. And you also gain a racial that passively increases your engineering skill by 15. So what race would I choose as an alliance player? Probably human because of the weapon specializations that will benefit you in PvE and PvP, but also because of perception that will be useful if you like to PvP. So what race should you pick as a horde? If you decide to go with Troll, then you will benefit a bit from Regeneration. This allows you to passively regen 10% of your total health regeneration during a fight. But the main reason why Troll are amazing is because of Berserkering, that increases your attack speed by anywhere from 10 and all the way up to 30%. The lower the health you have as you activate this, the higher attack speed you will also gain. One race I like to play when a PvP is Undead, Will of Forsaken will grant you immunity to charm, fear and sleep effects while it's active, so for 5 seconds, and also remove any current effects that is already on you. And whenever you kill an undead or a humanoid target, then you can also use Cannibalize to regen 7% of your total health every 2 seconds for the next 10 seconds, so a total of 5 ticks. My most favorite race has to be the Orc. Hardiness that increases your chance to resist stuns by 25%, 
Yeah, this is useful in PvP, but can also become handy in PvE. And Blood Fury that increases your attack power by 25% for 15 seconds. Something you can activate when you need to burst a target. As long as you're not tanking. Because you will also get a debuff that reduces all healing effects on you by 50% for 25 seconds. So like I mentioned earlier, it will be important to do the different dungeon quests to gain more experience but also amazing loot as you're leveling up. But the thing is that some of these will also require you to travel around or do different pre-quests before you can acquire them. Therefore, I use an add-on to make sure I do all the necessary things. The name of this add-on is Rested Experience and there's a free trial version you can download right now by using the link below the video. It also comes with a leveling guide just in case you don't know how to level. And of course, a full version you can also purchase with a lot of other features. For example, in the future, how to acquire your most important rooms at level 25. If you wish to get the full version, you can even get a discount by using the link and of course also applying my discount code guide MMO. But the main reason why I mentioned the add-on was simply just so you knew where to pick up the different dungeon quests, what pre-quest you might also need to do, so you can plan all of this in your level 1 to 25 route. If you're mainly interested in classic season of discovery, then on my channel you can find a ton of different videos, and soon also a lot more, for example tips and tricks, gold making, and even leveling guides. So if you're interested in that kind of content, then I would highly recommend you to also subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you get notified the next time I post a video.